says here in the translation is, and thou Lord in the beginning has laid the foundation. Remember, this is still talking about the sun, but it has to be. So contextually speaking, it says, but unto the sun save, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, a scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast love righteousness, hate the iniquity. So again, like, remember, this is equal with God. So unto the Son, he saith, thy phone is, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness, a scepter of your kingdom. Thou hast love righteousness and hate iniquity. God, even I, God, have anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy. And thou, Lord. So it's still, it's, still, it's still contextually talking about the same God or the Son that's referred to the previous verse. So you know, unto the Son, he says he's not there in the Greek. It's just simply about the Son. Your throne, O God, is forever. I but think can, that contextually like, makes sense. It could also be translated as God is your throne, as well as your, your throne, O God, is forever. It could also be God is your throne. I don't see that. I mean, I, I mean that, that, that sounds like interpretation on your both, part, but I don't it. really see that. Well, the Good News Bible and I think the RSV, they, they give a footnote saying that this is an alternative translation. Well, I have, I have here a King James, and, and the reason why I use the King James is because yeah. I don't rely on these faulty translations that came later. And, and that's just oh, my okay. opinion. But I, I do think the King James is closest to the original text because it does read from the Dead Sea Scrolls. But you know it's based upon medieval manuscripts. Like it's not based upon the most ancient manuscripts, but it's based upon middle middle e uh, ages manuscripts. That's a claim, but I, I don't. I, I wouldn't argue it's based on sorry because it comes from Erasmus's text, which comes from the Byz Byzantine text, which obviously lead back further to. It's not the original copies, but it would be copies based upon those. Texts. But that's that's. I mean, oh, if, you, okay. if you if you really wanted to, you can literally find that most copies are copies of copies when it comes to the biblical manuscripts. I don't want to get into a biblical manuscript. Argument. Yeah, yeah. I really want to get into like yeah. who Jesus whether is. Jesus is God. Yeah. So I, I I do believe. I mean, from what. From, I'm going to talk about this exam because you, you come from an Islamic paradigm. You don't come from the paradigm. Yeah, of I'm not just... trying to interpret the Bible in a Muslim way. But, um, I, 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 but want to argue, yeah. I would argue if we were to interpret it yeah. solely by the Islamic view, yeah. would you agree that this Bible does teach that Jesus is God? I have to be consistent. So I have to say that the Bible doesn't fully support the doctrine of the Trinity, nor does it support the Muslim view as well that Jesus was a servant messenger and prophet but that, that wasn't that wasn't my answer. so my, my, my so my question quite well, kindly was yeah according to this Bible so he's called God in the sense that Moses is God or uh, the angels are God David is God right. so in that sense but not in the full divinity because even Oregon for example believed that Jesus was divine but he believed that his divinity was less than the father's divinity so there's still the one true God the the God of you do realise Oregon is later than people like the same. It's from Saint the fourth century. Yeah. So Saint Justin Martyr is way early now. Even Ace is way early now. So Justin you... Martyr actually believed that even though the Logos was the source of creation, he believed that God created the Logos before he created the world. So I want so to show you the some Logos quotes. comes into existence. I want to show you some quotes. In fact, I want to read them to you so like, we don't get caught up in uh, any. Uh, yeah. So we don't get caught up in anything. Okay. So this is Justin Martyr. For in the name of God the Father and the Lord of the universe and of, and of our Saviour Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, they received the washing water. Mm -hmm. Now this baptismal formula is also used in the Didache. The mm -hmm. Didache refers to the three in reference to the one baptism that we were to receive. Mm -hmm. well, question, why, why Does is he it, say I mean, they're one being though? Yeah. But why is it that that reference is used specifically one one Lord Jesus, one one, one God the Father and mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit? Why are they three mentioned together in baptismal work and, and even in worship, in baptismal forms and worship? Why is that mentioned? Well, in the sense that the Father made the Son, the Messiah, the Christ, through his spirit. So that's not consistent with Old Testament theology. But it isn't. Right? It, if, if the Old Testament is going to tell saying, us that there were yeah. no gods beside me, there were no gods formed over me, and that I share my glory with nobody alone but Isaiah 43, mm -hmm. then it cannot be the case that the created being is given reverence and glory next to the Father. And that the Holy it, Spirit. It's not saying that they're one being, or it's not saying that these are three persons. But it doesn't of need to. One God the, the reason why, why I would say it doesn't need to is because what is assumed here is that, it's not, that, that, that this baptismal formula is to worship God alone. The reason why you're baptizing anybody is for reverence to God alone. Not only. necessarily because there's baptism of Paul, there's baptism of Moses in the Bible, but it doesn't mean that they worship in the same way as God is worshipped. There's no baptism. So, when, when, when so you, in when 1 we mention, Corinthians chapter 1. Yeah, when we mention baptism of yeah. Paul, right? Paul, said, Paul, Paul isn't talking about a baptism solely for himself. So it's not a baptism relating to him. 
right? But in fact, Paul rebukes in 1 Corinthians those who fit, who say to him foolishly that, oh, right, if you're baptized in the person, then you're part of them. For example, he mentioned, like, that, uh, like are you not of Christ? Like, are you Kephos, like, of other groups as well? Because these groups are coming together saying, I am of Christ, I'm of Peter, I'm of Paul. And then he says to him, like, it's like I didn't baptize you. <laughs> So again, it's, it's, the, the assumption being made is not that he himself is the author of the I think it's similar to like how well, Christ Moses says, people uh, are baptized. So Christ says in Matthew 20, 18, mm -hmm. you are to go to all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So this is a mm -hmm. command given by the, Holy, by the Holy Lord Jesus Christ, of God, and it's given to his apostles in the formula yeah. of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's not the Trinity. Why would he do that if all reference is given to the Father alone? I mean, for one thing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are not names, but they're titles. And in the book of Acts, they're baptised in Christ. So Christ, Say that again, sorry, I couldn't hear you. It's very loud. Yeah, so these are titles. They're not names, for, for one thing. Like, Father is a title, the Son is a title, and the Holy course, Spirit is a title. They're titles, but they're titles uh, of the one being that is God. Um, well, the, the, the Father's never called the Son. Of course, but it doesn't have the to Holy be, because we, we believe in a type person of God, but right? again, right, I think these titles are all to be revered, because the Bible shows us clearly, in Old Testament, if we're going to be consistent, yeah. the Old Testament shows us that only one God is to be revered, and if we if it's assume the Old Testament only mentions one, he is that God, then who is this other person that Christ is telling us to revere? Bear in mind, he says in, in, in John 5, verse 23, that you are to honour me the same way you honour the Father. He's, he's not, he's yeah, not denying because he who Lord. receives me doesn't receive me, but the one who set me, or he who rejects me uh, rejects the one who set me. So it's like when Moses appointed Joshua as his successor, and he said, whoever rejects him rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who set me. So this, well, this of course is, you would reject the Christ. You would, you would reject the Lord if you reject Christ. That's, that's a fact. You know, even, but we don't believe that the Father and the Son are in separate, in separate deity. I think the assumption being made is that because we believe that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are three different persons, mm -hmm. that they must, in, in, in any, every instance, be distinct. But we don't believe in that. We believe that, just like Christ says in John 14, right? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father, right? But he's I'm not in the, the Father. father. Yeah, yeah, he's not the Father, but I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Now, bear in mind, the Father is in me and I'm in the Father. If you're going to take that literally, Paul, then where is Christ? Because Christ says in John 3.13, I'm sorry for how did the Lord... But I'm, I'm just trying, I'm going through John to make a point. Christ says in John 3.13 that he, is, does, he came from heaven and that he's also in heaven with the Father. Now, what do you do with this passage? Well, John the Baptist says, is, does John baptise a baptism which is from heaven or from earth? But obviously there, within that context, it doesn't mean that baptism literally came from heaven or John the Baptist existed in heaven. It just means in terms of him giving authority, the authority comes from God. So when Jesus speaks about from heaven, it doesn't literally mean that Jesus existed in heaven, but it means that he's sent by God. Because he says, he who believes in me doesn't believe in me, but believes in the one who sent me. And he says, my testi if I testify of myself, my, my testimony, testimony is not true. But, but he also says, the one who sent me, I yeah. bear witness of myself and another bears witness of me. Yeah. And he also says, what because I do... Because my testimony is not enough. But he also That's why you need two, testimon say two enough. testimonies. He didn't say enough. Like he says, like, okay. I bear witness of myself and the Father bears witness of me. But he also okay. says that what the Father does, I do so likewise. So he's equating himself with the Father. I mean, the, the thing is, you're ignoring the passages where, where he's Christ saying, equates... He's, he's like, allow me to finish this. Because then we can't have a debate, sorry. Right. If, if you're going to ignore the passage where Christ equates himself with God and then attribute that to, to God being in Christ, then you've got a problem with what Christ is saying. I'm going to read this out for what it says. Right? And no man have ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. So notice what Christ is saying. He's saying that he is, he, no man have ascended up to heaven, but him that came down from heaven. He's talking about himself, obviously. He came down from heaven. Even the Son of Man, which is in heaven, he's in a location, he's in two locations. Now, really, if we're to read this literally, he has to be on earth and in heaven. Mm -hmm. Who can be in two places at once, God? God. It's the same with like the baptism of John the Baptist. Like John the Baptist, baptism came from heaven rather than from earth. But it doesn't mean that it, John the Baptist literally came down from heaven. But John, John, but John, but John doesn't say he himself came to heaven. He says the Baptist came to heaven. He also says early in the chapter, yeah. if you read it, right, but also that he was ordered to do it. The one who told him to do it was the one that says he he is the one who baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire. And he's talking about Jesus Christ. Well, not quite, because the disciples of John 
don't become followers of Jesus, with the exception of maybe Andrew or, or Peter. But generally, there's like this kind of rivalry between um, the followers of John and, 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 and Jesus. Um, but um, but yeah, the baptism came from heaven, meaning that it was commissioned or ordained by God, but it doesn't mean physically or literally it so, came down from heaven. So what then do you do with John himself saying, and I'm going to read out for you, you see, I think it's in John. So this is John's last testimony before he's found in prison, right? And it oh, okay. says this, right? John answered and said, a man can receive nothing except it be given him from heaven. You yourselves bear witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that have the bride is the bridegroom, but a friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoiceth greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy therefore is fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that came from above is above all. He that is earth is earthly, and, the, and speak of earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. And what he have seen and heard, that he testified, and no man received it. He have received, he have received his testimony, and, Sorry, he that have received his testimony have set in his heart that God is true. For he whom God have sent speaketh the words of God. For, for God giveth not the spirit my measure. So it's clear that John himself is saying, bearing in mind you brought him up to, to, to talk about baptism analogy, mm -hmm. he himself says not only does he must he discipline, must he increase, but Jesus must sorry, that he must decrease, but Jesus must increase. But also that he that cometh from above is above all, and then, and that he that is earth referring to himself is earthly. He that coming from above heaven is above all. He's referring to Jesus Christ as the individual that comes from heaven. So he's mentioning a figure coming from heaven, not a law or a decree, but a literal figure coming from heaven. No, he's also saying that the baptism as well came from heaven as well. Yeah, yeah but, but I, 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 to be fair, Nazim, I already answered that basically it's like a decree coming from heaven, heaven is different from what John and Christ are both saying. They, so Christ is saying he physically came from heaven. A decree, which is the baptism, was decreed from heaven. There's no denying it. For example, in John 6, if you read John 6, mm -hmm. right, Jesus Christ says himself, he is the bread that came from heaven. Mm -hmm. So he relates himself as that man. Obviously, you don't Testament. believe. Obviously, you don't believe Jesus literally was bread. I don't or, have or to. the manna. But, but that's the thing. Um, I, don't, I don't have to. But if, if you read the context, yeah. Jesus Christ says in John six sixty three that, that these words are spirit and life. Mm -hmm. So he's, he's speaking in spiritual terms, but he's also speaking of himself. For it makes all it makes all logical sense if we're going to read the Bible contextually that Jesus has to be claiming in some way, way shape, form deity. I'm not and I saying think your interpretation just uh, by the way, pre makes a lot of plot holes to the Bible. The pre-existence doesn't necessarily mean that he pre-existed as a conscious being. He could also exist in God's foreknowledge. But even if he literally exist pre-existed, he could also exist as another creation of God as well, like an like an angel, as the Jehovah's Witnesses believe. Well, the, the, the uh, claim in John one three just debunks that because it says all things were created through him, and no, nothing was created without him. The was... problem with the interpreting John one one to say that Jesus is that you end up point, committing equivocation and you end up making Jesus the Father and the Trinity, like you end up saying in the beginning was Jesus and Jesus was with the Father and Jesus was the Father or in or Jesus was with the Trinity and Jesus was the Trinity. That's, that's if you assume that that theos in that word literally means God the Father and not the deity of God. Yeah, yeah so that's why so I mean you say you're in the, like in the beginning high whole and whole logo theos yeah. In the beginning was a word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, yeah. and the word became flesh and God. If you would say in the beginning was a word, the word was with God, if you say in the beginning was Jesus, and Jesus was with the Father, and Jesus was the Father, yes, you would be equating the Father with Jesus, but we're not saying that. And neither is John. He's saying in the beginning was the word, yeah. distinction, the word was with God, clearly being with a being means that you're not the same in, in persons mm. that being, at least in, in modern day language, I don't know about anybody. Yeah. And the word was God. The word was Kai and Kai Logos Theos or something like that. No, I Kai, 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 but the um, fact is the Theos, I think... Kai I think, Logos Theos. Yeah. So I think the, the Theos used there is, is used in terms of the nature of deity. That's what, that's what Jesus it's said. It's used in the qualitative sense, but it doesn't refer to a person. But that's, that's what Jesus says. Because if you say it's a person, then you end up making Jesus the Father. Not necessarily, no. I, I can still claim it's because a person. Because if you substitute the word Logos for yeah, Jesus. But if, you, if, you, if you assume that the word Theos means the Father in that verse, then you make that stupid something. But I, I don't think the Bible's making that verse. For example, in Genesis 1.18, right, mm. it says that Jesus Christ is the only begotten Son of God. Only begotten Son of God. So which verse? 
John, uh, John 118, sorry. John 118. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, so the, Jesus is yeah. the only begotten Who's son. at the bosom of the Father, whom no man has ever seen. But the problem with that interpretation is that if no one has ever seen I've God... I've not made an interpretation yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you kind okay, of skip ahead okay. of what I was saying. Okay, carry on. Okay, sorry. so when it comes to only begotten, right, the, the word used is monogonase. Right, mm. right. Mo monogonase, monogenes. Genes are what are connected to us. We have genes within us. Mono, one, so the only genes. So in, in Hebrew, in, in, sorry, for example, in Abraham, Abraham is referred to as monogonase as well. Not Abraham, Isaac is referred to in as Hebrews, monogonase yeah. in Hebrews 11. Yeah. But the problem with claiming that is like, yeah, we could claim, look, in a covenantal sense, Abraham is the only begotten son of God, even though Abraham had many other sons, that's a fact. Mm. But it's the covenant that makes Isaac important because it's through his covenant that Jesus Christ born. Mm. In the same sense that Jesus Christ is the only begotten, begotten son of God because he by nature, and if you read the Greek, uh, the Greek translation, it says by he by nature is God, but through the nature, through him sharing in the deity that, that God has, or God the Father has. And that's how most Christian terms did for like hundreds of years, man. <laughs> well, if you look at John 1, 18, it says no one has ever seen God. Yeah, no one um, seen But if Jesus is the son of God, who is God, then people saw God. Okay, so that, again, like, I think you made that, <laughs> that, that argument with uh, Cobain. Right? Cobain, yeah. Ultimately, like, yeah, we could, well, we, we can also claim that Jesus, no one's ever seen God, but the Old Testament tells us that people have seen God. Moses saw God, for example, in Exodus 33. So what do we do, what, what do, we do then when the verse is saying something yeah, then like that? Just give it a figurative interpretation. When it says no one, I mean, we don't, it, when it, it says people be, saw God, it doesn't mean they literally saw God. It doesn't need God, to be figurative. We just need could to be pay, a look, theophany or something like this. But we, we just need to read the first verse what it says. It okay. says that no one has seen God, but the, father, the, the Son of God has made him known. Mm -hmm. But the only, God, sorry, the only begotten Son has made him known, right? So who is it that made God known in the Old Testament? It would be the Son. Yeah. So ultimately, we could just claim that the Son of God made God known through the centuries. Exactly. And that God there isn't Jesus, but someone else. I mean, we don't, but again, the, we... Jesus I, I, made God known to people. I wouldn't deny that God can be used of the Father. Okay, so, uh, but again, it depends on what the context we're using. It's not yeah, just like... So that, context, so that verse isn't teaching that, is, that Jesus is God. It's I only it teaching is, that I Jesus made God known to people who people have the, never the, seen. The Bible nowhere dictates that, especially Old Testament, nowhere states that anybody would be made God. And I've found that you're, you're being very inconsistent when it comes to that. For example, oh, yeah, like, that was the is other. there anywhere in your... Because you did show me a passage and yeah. respectfully I did refute. <laughs> but like, when it comes to the Old Testament, there is nowhere where we see a character being revered with the same titles as God, like, so the same names that God has, the first and the last, um, the, the one who gives life, the, the, um, the one who's given all reverence of all things, Moses isn't even given that, that title. Nor is it, nor is it display any of the characteristics of God. Yet, the angel of the Lord does, the word of the Lord does, or the memoir in the Jewish custom mm. does. And in the New Testament, Christ does that all the time. He says, honour me the same way you honour the Father. I, I give God, I raise the dead. Right, I am to be worshipped and stuff like that. And then obviously right, it doesn't say, oh, worship me the same way. No, but honor, to honour is to give reverence or to give worship. So, How do you understand when Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4 says that Christians were sharing God's divine nature? I, I explained this to you the other day, actually. <laughs> I mean, how, how I understand it is by, by, by having the Holy Spirit, you're partaking in the... In the mm. Because that not, sounds it, like you will become God as well, but I mean, maybe lesser sense, God. I mean, the Eastern Orthodox, and this is why, like, obviously, we have a different view from the Eastern Orthodox Church. The Eastern Orthodox Church have the view of theosis, so the idea that you become like God. I don't really have that view. I'm not, I'm not denying it. I think, in a sense, you can, but in a sense, I do believe on Earth, we are partaking of the divine nature by being part of the Spirit, because the, the, the Spirit in the New Testament is called the Spirit of the Promise, and if you read that very same chapter in Second Peter, is it First Peter or Second? Second. Right? Yeah. So if you read that same chapter, right, it literally states that the, the promise given to the saints or something like that, something to that effect, right? It's talking about the Spirit. So when we have the Spirit of God, we partake in the divine nature. But that doesn't mean in, in, a, in the same sense that we have the ability, one, to, to be called the first and last, to be revered, because I meant, you mentioned the synagogue. Uh, so you are, yeah, the synagogue of yeah. Satan worships you or yeah. reverses you. Again, first yeah. of all, the synagogue of Satan is referred to as the false Jews, because Jesus Christ says in John 8, 8 44, that yeah. you are of the synagogue of Satan. When it's oh, okay. And the reason why Jesus says that they will worship you at your feet, it's because ultimately that they, those same people reject you, they'll be at your feet and worship you. So I'm not, like, mm. 
I'm paraphrasing, but that's what it means. But it's not the same worship. So allow, allow me to finish. I, I don't, I'm I, sorry, I, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. allow my plane yeah. here, but like, it's not the same worship that God used. So contextually, yeah. it's not yeah. the same worship that God has. For example, in Revelation 5, all the creatures in heaven and on earth worship the Lamb seated on the throne.